Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Engineers from the Home Desk series. And I've got something very interesting for you today. Uh, we're going to talk with Kiran, who heads our Think Studio Lab in Bangalore. And they're into uh, product prototyping, industrial design, packaging design. And we're going to talk a little bit about how you can virtualize uh, some of these activities. So, hi, Kiran. How are you doing? Hey, oh, doing good. Great. So, Kiran, you have a very close-knit team that uh, works together in a beautiful uh, design lab studio in Bangalore. So, how big uh, a paradigm shift has it been for all of you to work from home and, and not come in to your design studio? Yeah, it's been quite a challenge, uh, I believe. And for the better part of it, I wasn't around when these things happened. But from what I understand, uh, getting, getting, you know, we typically work on desktops. Uh, and we work, you know, in front of each other. We interact with each other, and uh, so suddenly now you're asked to work from home, and so that's that's become a very uh, you know uh, difficult to comprehend in the beginning, right? How are you going to manage uh, find that comfort spot in your house to do work, typically, which is not what we are doing, and uh, so. So what uh, we have done is managed to get laptops uh, to people who do not have their own personal laptops, um, and then those who have their own personal laptops, uh, we have we have had our IT team uh, help in configuring them so that uh, they can access the uh, uh, the desktop in the in the Think Studio through remote access and work. So this kind of uh, platform of accessing the remote. Uh, desktop is something that probably works best for us uh, for the kind of softwares we use, the tools that we have, we need to access. Uh, so we cannot have that installed uh, on our laptops and the kind of uh, you know computing power uh, that is needed, uh, it's, it works well with this kind of uh, you know uh, um, medium of operating, right? And uh, so it took some time uh, to finally manage to have everyone, uh, you know, engaged, uh, you know, ready to work. Uh, we still have some glitches here and there, uh, network issues that uh, I think is quite common across uh, a lot of other people too. Uh, but everybody is managing somehow. So, Kiran, getting specifically into product design, uh, there's so much that you guys do. Right, a user design, user centered analysis, a sketching, prototyping, packaging design. So, how have you adapted your systems and processes uh, for this remote style of operations? Since, uh, I mean, uh, for any product design or research activity that we do, projects that come with these requirements, uh, most of the initial work is done at a desk, right? Uh, where we're doing the background work, uh, where we're trying to understand the whole uh, you know, product that we are working with or what are the objectives of the research activity, etc. Uh, and then we, once we are done with the background, then we look at field activities specifically for the research. But in terms of design, uh, we can still do everything uh, in-house within the space that we are, uh, even uh, to some extent, uh, you know, playing around with uh, uh, modeling, uh, physical models per se, right? Um, so, largely, uh, we haven't changed much on the way we work. We're still following the same process. Um, because we have access to our desktops, uh, we have access to all the information that we are commonly sharing across uh, that we've been doing even before. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, access to other, uh, you know, knowledge platforms uh, is, is still possible through online uh, sources. So. Uh, we haven't faced a significant amount of challenge. Uh, most of the challenge is still, you know, getting used to working on a laptop and sitting at home and working. So timing yourself, uh, you know, doing putting in your eight hours or, or whatever basic minimum that is needed. So that that is where uh, uh, I think the uh, the change is. So that's the organ or behavioral change or you know the organized mindset that needs to be changed. So I think that is where the problem is. Otherwise, in process, uh, we, we are not really facing much of an issue. Um, uh, some some comforts are not available. Uh, like we have digitizing tablets that are in the office. We cannot use them. 
uh, we have to come back and stick to basic pencil and paper and use whatever uh, you know some of us may not have scanners or you know or copiers at home so we use our mobile phone cameras to you know digitize it and then email it to ourselves uh, and then now open it access our mails in our through our desktop download it so it's just an it's a layer of additional layer of you know work that that goes in to get that same information that we could have gotten easier if you were working in the office so otherwise there is no serious disruption in the workflow so the other thing that we face as a challenge is uh, when we have these samples physical samples that were that are provided to us from very different customers right that we use as a reference now we cannot we cannot bring them home right so what are physical samples we have had to use that are available in the office that uh, that is something that we cannot now do a physical touch and feel uh, to understand the product so for a new project uh, if you are going to start during this phase of work from home uh, have working with a physical sample or ex- experiencing a physical sample is always going to be a challenge unless we have something similar to it that we can you know uh, that is available locally in our own homes or that we can probably get from a grocery store that is open or something right uh, so this is one of the drawbacks that uh, we we see So Kiran what about prototyping that is a little bit more challenging right because you don't have access to a 3D printer so how can you share a few creative ways uh, in which you're doing product prototyping uh, prototyping has always uh, had multiple mediums or you know by which you can uh, you know create a model so 3D CAD modeling is typically a digital prototyping method right so that is something that we have heavily relied on uh, throughout our uh, professional lives right um physical prototyping is is actually a much better uh medium to understand what 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 kind of product you're designing or what your objectives are how do you measure your objectives right uh, you get a sense you get a feel of the product with a physical prototype um compared to so- do, doing something uh on a digital space and uh, as you rightly put a 3d printer that we have at our studio uh, we can no longer access it at the max uh, we can turn it on and uh, you know send a command to start uh, you know start 3d printing but nobody can go get a physical sample out of the machine because you know they're at work right um so so one of the ways that we can manage uh, that, that we have done is to come back and stick to you know you know like grassroots innovation uh look at uh, uh something that we call frankenstein prototyping mm-hmm. right so it's a it's a term that says that you just make shift adding building something up to resemble something that you need or that you want to and use that uh to get a sense or feel of your design so you can use regular household materials or like you know paper glue you if you have a child and you have artwork supply is available to you even if you don't you may have some of these supplies available to you right um so you can use use these things and uh, explore uh, a physical prototyping right in terms of uh, uh, to get a look and feel uh, for your product design so kiran how is the employee morale been um what are the things you're doing to make sure that everybody stays connected that there's enough interaction and uh, everyone feels part of the group so our teams are pretty close knit right uh, so formally uh, we are having calls every uh, uh, i mean uh, twice a week so i'm just uh, so that people get some time to have no you know uh, do some work get some progress and then share the updates um uh, with the uh, so with the entire team uh, but i think uh, uh you know living grisha and me out they probably have their own small whatsapp group that they're chit chatting about all the time uh, you know joking around or whatever so they that i'm pretty sure they're doing it uh, they haven't confessed to me i did uh, confront them with that question they just laughed it away so uh, i think them they're doing fine but otherwise i guess they typically what everyone would feel sitting at home uh, 24 hours a day uh, for the rest of <laughs> uh, this you know uncertain period 
uh, whatever frustrations they have, probably it's normal. Um, right? And uh, we've managed to, you know, you know uh, make some uh, adjustment to some people who've been staying in PGs to move, uh, move and stay with their colleagues, uh, so that they're not uh, left alone and they have some company. And we have tried to help as many people as possible in terms of, you know. Uh, giving, they have that liberty, so they can go home. Doesn't mean they can stay here. They can go back to their natives, as long as they have the infrastructure with them to work. Right. So that that has been enabled. So so far, I don't see any uh, uh, any concerns there. One of our colleagues is is due to get married this month. Mm -hmm. Right. So some of them planned to had planned a visit, so they're not they're not going to be able to go. Uh, because of the situation, yes, but that fellow is still getting married. Mm -hmm. um, I did speak to him, so he said, "Yeah, it's all fine. They do a low-key wedding, right, and close it. They're not. They're not. He's refused to change the date. So yes, so he's getting married on time as per plan. So yeah." We hope you found this edition of the Engineers from the Home Desk series useful. Uh, so until next time, uh, stay safe, stay strong, and. Uh, Thanks for watching.